Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to do some more baking. We're gonna make a beautiful biscuit called a domino biscuit. Um, it's a bit fiddly, but it's actually quite fun to make. It looks absolutely stunning on the coffee table or with afternoon tea. So it's a, um, you could call it a sand biscuit. The French call it a biscuit sablé. It's one of those brittle biscuits, the melt in the mouth. You know, the kind of that you can only dunk once in your coffee, otherwise you lose half the biscuit. So let's do this. So we got some plain flour, some unsweetened cocoa powder, some icing sugar or powdered sugar. We got some salt, we got an egg yolk. We got some ice cold butter, unsalted butter. And we got some vanilla essence. I made my own vanilla extract or essence, uh, but you can use any one as long as it has the proper flavor and some vanilla seeds in it, uh, you should be fine. Um, just about the plain flour, make sure because in this recipe, we want a nice light crumbly cookie. So we don't want to create gluten. So you need a plain flour with a, a, a protein level below 10%. And if you look at the uh, nutritional information on a pack of flour, the protein is always on there. So this one's 9%. So as long as it's between 8 and 10%, you're fine. Uh, also, we're going to be making this recipe in a food processor with the cutter. Again, this is not to create any gluten, and that's the fastest way and best way to do it. You can also do it by hand, uh, just crumble in the cold butter with the flour, and then incorporate the other ingredients. But the idea is to work fast and have a very short crumbly dough. So as usual, you'll find the recipe in the description below. First, I'm going to make the whole dough vanilla, and then we're going to take half of it and flavor it uh, chocolate and, and color it with the cocoa powder. So I'm going to put my flour in the food processor with the cutter blade. And then I got some, this is ice cold butter. Uh, again, the, the idea is to work as fast as possible and process the dough as short as possible. I'm going to put my icing sugar in as well, or my powdered sugar. I'm going to put in a pinch of salt. And now I'm going to blend it a few times first. And then I'm going to put in my egg yolk and my vanilla. So I'm just going to quickly pulse it a few times. Yeah, the icing sugar will blow out a bit. Okay, so now I can put, it starts to come together a little bit, I can put my egg yolk and a dash of my vanilla essence. And now we're just going to keep blitzing. Let's have another look. You might give it a good shake. And you can hear it as well. If that's what I'm looking for, that's what I'm hearing. That's it. So that's the stage we're looking for. The dough is starting to come together. So now I can put this on my table. I'm just going to work this a little bit until it comes together as one dough. And again, don't overwork it. We want to have that nice crumbly light cookie or biscuit that's enough so I'm just gonna cut this in half now so half I'm gonna keep vanilla and to the other half I'm just gonna cut it up in a few pieces and sprinkle my cocoa powder over it and now I'm just gonna working this unsweetened cocoa powder so like I said the recipe is in the description below and yes it's in metric because you know baking is quite a precise art form and unfortunately cups and spoons or sticks don't work for uh, 
precise recipes like this. So now we got our two pieces of dough, vanilla and chocolate. And as you can see, yeah, it's not 100% like uniform color, but rather that than overwork it. Otherwise we'll have a tough biscuit. So that's good enough. So next we need to roll out these dough pieces. And we want to roll them out the same thickness. Well, both pieces the same thickness, but also the same thickness all over the dough sheet. Now, again, like I said before, I don't like using any additional flour. So I'm going to roll this out in between baking paper. You want to use plastic and use plastic as well. I've got a couple of rolling pins here and you'll see in a minute why. I've got a smaller one and then I've got this smooth uh, silicone one, which I like using because I know it's uniform and straight. So I can roll it out a little bit first by hand, just on the dough. But again, no extra flour. I'm gonna try and stay as rectangular as possible. And then put some, another sheet of silicone paper on there, or baking paper. And then we can keep rolling. I'm looking for a thickness about 8 to 10 millimeters, which is about a quarter of an inch, I think, 8, no, a bit more. So we could do this freehand, but there's another way of doing it more easy. I'm going to try and stay as rectangular as possible, so I'm going to reshape it a little bit, which is not a problem. And now here's the, the way I do it to try and get it the same thickness everywhere. So take two books or notepads, the same thickness, lay one each side, and then this baking paper goes back on top, and then I take my long rolling pin and I roll it out in between the notepads, and there you have it. Now I've got the same thickness absolutely everywhere and these notepads are about 8 to 10 millimeters thick so this one the vanilla one is done it's the same thickness everywhere and i'm just going to put this in the fridge now to let it set for about one hour minimum so now the chocolate one i'm going to put it immediately in between my notepads so grease proof paper or baking paper notepads dough goes in the middle and we also going to try and make sure that both pieces are roughly about the same size so we're going to do a little bit more that way and then again in between the notepads and I can't go wrong, I can push all I want because the notepads stop me from making a mistake. Okay, yeah. so this one goes into the fridge as well now. So my biscuit dough has set in the fridge for about an hour and it's nice and firm. And now we need to cut it into equal strips. I want the strips to be the same width as the thickness. So that's eight millimeters. So I've taken a piece of paper and I put some lines across at eight millimeters. And all I need now is a sharp knife. I'm just gonna cut it straight there. And best to do it with a sharp knife and there. And don't worry about these offcuts, we can make a nice biscuit with it as well. So that's it. Put these aside. And then I'm just gonna mark my dough. And then at the end as well. And then we just cut across. From one end to the other end. And 
nearly there. Okay, so next we're gonna cut the chocolate one. Okay, so next we're gonna cut the chocolate one. Okay, so next we're gonna cut the chocolate one. And um, if it's warm in the kitchen, it feels quite warm here. So I'm gonna keep this one in the fridge until I've done the chocolate one. So because I don't wanna get it too soft. So you see I've got all the nice different layers. Three. And here we go again, we got our strips. And that's it, that's our chocolate done. So here's my vanilla and that's my chocolate. I'm just gonna cut them the same length. To where we have the full length in both those. There is a and like I said, don't worry about the offcuts. We'll actually make a beautiful biscuit with it as well. So now we're gonna build our biscuit bar. So we're gonna take one. Vanilla. We're gonna put the chocolate against it. And don't worry, it doesn't need to be too precise. Another vanilla. And another chocolate. Another vanilla. Chocolate. Now can you see, don't worry if that piece is just broken. You just attach it again, that's it. Okay, and so that's our first layer. And that's how I prefer to work with. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna go six wide and we're gonna go six high. So we've started with vanilla here. So obviously we're gonna start, we're gonna start with chocolate. So now we put the chocolate on there. And then a vanilla. And that's our second layer. Chocolate. set my biscuit bar in the fridge for an hour okay and like I said obviously we're not gonna waste these leftovers so I'm gonna try and roll it out as equal as possible again in between paper I don't want to use any extra flour and now the chocolate bar that's it yeah I think that's roughly well the same I'm going to put one on top of the other I'm just going to roll it up and use the paper as a guidance 
and the two. Okay. Again, this one I'm gonna roll it into the grease proof paper. And I'm gonna set it in the fridge as well, together with the other one. Okay, so our bars of biscuit dough have been setting in the fridge for an hour. And now we can just cut it into biscuits. And yeah, we don't really have to waste anything. And I'm gonna cut them about the same thickness like we've made them. Just put them on the baking tray which I've lined with some parchment paper. Some of them are thicker than the other ones, that's the, that's the end bit. Okay, and then we got the other one, which was the leftover. And we can cut this into biscuits too. And voila. So all that's left to do now is bake our biscuits in a preheated oven of 160 degrees Celsius or 320 Fahrenheit for 12 minutes. That's all it should take. That's it. Good. Biscuits are done. All they took is about 12 minutes, but when you take them out of the oven, let them cool down about 10 minutes before handling them because when they're hot they're very brittle but like now 10 minutes later and you can see they have a nice light golden color at the bottom and that's enough and these two so there you have it domino biscuits just let them cool down and they're absolutely delicious for dunking in the coffee So thank you for watching, don't forget to click like and subscribe and if you have any queries or questions leave them in the comment section. Have a nice day, thank you.